So. Now, you guys also uh, were there in the beginning of you know what was, became the big Seattle scene. Yeah. And uh, like you said, broke the news on a lot of bands. Um, what would you say were uh, some of the people you possibly at the time? Because we all know Nirvana, Pearl Jam. Yeah. You know the big boys. Yeah. There are a lot of bands around who you know were really good at the time as well. Any that you really thought, yeah, I think these guys are going to go somewhere, really nice guys, whatever, and it just never right, quite yeah. popped for them? There was the Blackouts, which who I always thought were really good. A lot of the individual members of that mm -hmm. uh, uh, went places. There was, this, there was a group called Rally Go, mm -hmm. and they did a song called Mass Brew Action! Yes. <laughs> you guys remember that? Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Mass Brew Action! <laughs> Can you party? <laughs> you know, party our mass brew action. All right, you know, uh, they were they were great, and I, you know, gosh, there was any number of ones that uh, that just sort of uh, didn't quite make it because the way it works essentially is that a band has a natural life of about eighteen months, and if you make it in eighteen months, then you. Uh, financially need to stay together and so you kind of put aside differences and you because you're making money right and but you really can't stand each other after about 18 months but you <laughs> stay together to, to make money and you say you're you know been in radio for a while it would surprise me when I'd go in and see uh, these DJ teams it's very rare that if it's a you know a couple of people that they're in the same room because oh, they yeah. hate they, they hate, hate each other, other. Absolutely. yeah they hate each other and so they're in separate rooms and you're you know you're in between them because they can't stand <laughs> each other but they're making money as a team exactly so that's a you know I think oh, so you've seen that yeah so oh, yeah so when you're down to the water cooler you know one's talking shit about the other one oh yeah 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 and bands they they hate each other usually <laughs> after about eighteen months and uh, so they break up. You know, and they might have done some really cool music, but they just like, ah. Oh, you know. Any of the big bands that, that, that hit uh, surprised you? Like, um, I mean, because, you know, now we all know of them as big bands, but there was a time when they were just playing, you know, down at the, uh, you know, whatever, the under the rail or, right. yeah, you know, you know the, rock the candy or whatever. In the very beginning, the, the, uh, the, uh, the Heats, remember those guys, mm -hmm. the Heat? Yeah. I, actually, I actually thought those guys were going to, they, they really had what I thought was a real commercial, uh, I really enjoyed that group, yeah. and I, I act, they never quite broke through, and I, I really thought that they would, and I think a lot of people thought that. Well, and, for me, like, I was really surprised by Candlebox, not that they're not really good, but I remember when they were kind of here, and yeah. then they went at, they went on a tour, yeah. and all of a sudden they were really big, and they're saying, "Hey, we're from Seattle," and I, they are. <laughs> Not exactly. I know. They, I know. they were one of the people <laughs> who moved here. Exactly. We had a lot of that going on. I think they got a lot of flack because they were uh, they didn't they weren't looked as like a, you know like a workman type band, and they had been playing you know tons of clubs for right. months and months. No, that's what I'm saying. It was just, it was a shock. They were. Yeah, so I was like, who the hell are these guys? You know? Right, and I used to do a lot of work at Bad Animals uh, commercials and, and whatnot. And when those guys came in to do a record, they, you know, all just just a bunch of Ferraris, you know, in the uh, <laughs> in, in the garage, and that was so not the way that Seattle, Seattle was. Yeah. Seattle musicians, you know, although to be, you know, it, it was like. Uh, you know, people got on them about that, but it was, there was this sort of ethos or an idea that it's okay if you got rich and famous, but you ha it had to happen by accident. Oh, that okay. if you actually wanted it, if you really that wanted, was a problem. If you wanted it, that yeah, that was a problem. That was anti. Like if, it, if, it, if you if it accidentally you got famous, <laughs> then it, it was, was okay. okay. Yeah, That's right. You can yeah. keep the mil Yeah, you can keep the money, but <laughs> if you actually went out. <laughs> and see, the thing is that uh, Charlie, you mentioned him earlier, Charlie uh, Cross. Uh, when he was doing uh, the uh, biography of Kurt Cobain, Courtney just sort of gave him big garbage bags full of Kurt's journals and whatnot. Wow. And, yeah, I know. It was unbelievable. Yeah, that's insane. And Because um, I actually got kicked off her property one time. Well, there you go. <laughs> she wasn't giving me anything. No, she wasn't giving me anything. She's like, oh, okay. So he's like, he's like she, I don't she doesn't have any idea what she gave me, I don't think. And Probably he was, not. He was saying, he was going through and he was like, you know, he... It was all there. He wanted. I mean, he, yeah. he he was no. You know, people. Oh, he got. You know, it was. He was too. 
freaked out by his fan. No, he he wanted it every every bit. Every inch of the way. He wanted it every inch of the way. I mean, he it it didn't it didn't cure the basic. You know, the, every it, every and the, it, it paid uh, the bills, right? As they say. And I think on on any level with the band, uh, sure they like you know being uh, together, and making good music. But every band wants to be successful on some level. Yeah, right. You know, and if sure. it's mega stardom, then of course you know you guys. If it's you guys are in <laughs> bands, if it's mega stardom, that's like you sure, know icing okay. on the cake. Yeah, you're not going to turn it down. By accident, any artist is expressing. They want to right. One last question on the music area, and then we'll move on. Uh, there were some legendary uh, places to go to shows back in the what we'll call the late '80s through the mid '90s or whatever. Yeah. What were some of your What were some of your favorite places to go hunt? Well, the the very best still exists, which is the Showbox. I mean, that, yes. that was that was the still there. Yeah, that was the very best. Mm -hmm. And my parents even went there when they were in college in the in the '40s. You know, it was built as a venue for music, and acoustically, it was it was perfect. You know, um, the Paramount was all run down in those days. You know, it was like a, a tent, I do remember you know. that. But uh, <laughs> no, really, when it comes down to it, there were uh, yeah, like the there used to be this uh, yeah, and there was this theater right across from the Seattle Times that I don't remember what it was called, but that was a and they Times tore it down, but that mm -hmm. that was a good uh, <clears throat> a good venue. And then there was a place called Rex, which was right, uh, it became Club Vogue. And, right. I, and then, I forget what it is now, but it was right across the street from the uh, Virginia Inn. Mm -hmm. And Rex was a really cool place. But really, really, to be, to be quite show honest, box. the Showbox was by far Have the Have you been to the Showbox to Soto? No, I haven't, actually. Yeah, I was just curious if you had what no. your take on that. It's a completely different feel. Oh, no, I know. I've seen warehouse it. Warehouse feel. I, yeah. I mean, it's it's fine. It's great, but no, it's I, I certainly mean, not the show box. No, I saw, I saw the Ramones at the show box. I saw, you know, the uh, the specials, XTC, nice. you know, uh, uh, Devo. It was an mm -hmm. incredible show. Uh, uh, and um, uh, Squeeze. You might not... That might not sort of figure in your top ten, but that was, uh, I think, Gang of Four might have been the best performance I saw there, but Squeeze just blew the, blew the roof off that place. That, I, a lot of people don't remember that band, but man, when they were, they, they could really, really rock. They could, they, it was amazing. I remember one time I was watching, uh, you guys would run during the week promos for the upcoming, you know, Almost Live that, that Saturday night. And there was one where you were at your desk, and you're kind of telling us what's coming up, and there was the video of the Black Crows playing, and you turn around and go, oh, Black Crows, very cool. And, <laughs> and uh, that was right about the time I was really getting into them, and they were just about to hit Seattle, and saw a show uh, at the old Mercer Arena. And the for Mercer. their Yeah, and for their encore, they had like a couple of guys from... Uh, uh, Pearl Jam got up on there, and yeah. it was it became like the Seattle and the Black. They kind of endorsed the Crows that day, and I, I often wonder if you had something to do with that because that spot ran so many times, and it, um, it was like free plug for the Crows. Uh, that one, I don't know. That, I've never heard of <laughs> maybe, maybe. So let's go into the almost live years because yeah. uh, you're at the Rocket, and then you go and do the the video rock magazine type thing. Yep. Yep. And uh, all of a sudden, you get a call about this uh, this show that they're in development. Yep, that's right. In those days, they were doing a lot of local shows, and they tried a lot of hosts, and they uh, settled on Ross. And uh, I had known Ross from the comedy club days, and. Uh, we didn't really hit it off exactly uh, very well in the very beginning, uh, but Ross was from uh, a sports background, and mm -hmm. that's very important because he uh, was a kind of guy who, if you could make the team, he would get behind you. And so he was kind of hard on me in the beginning, and I did a lot of stuff. And then when he saw like, that I was... Was he hard, like, critical, or he just... Yeah, and he just sort of didn't understand what I was doing. And, and it was a different... It, we had a different view of what was funny, and he was more of, um, you know, kind of a mainstream okay. comic, for yeah. lack of a better word. Although he was very, very funny guy. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was more experimental, more kind of on the edge, but uh, as soon as uh, he realized that I was getting laughs for the show, or that I, that I could make him look better, he was like, you know what, 
you know, he got, he really got behind me. And so uh, he, you know, was a big, uh, we, we did a lot of stuff together that worked very, very well. And, and the show became real popular. And a lot of that had to do with this dynamic that we had, that I would write things where he'd be this handsome, talented, he liked that. Effortless, and he liked that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he did. You could tell. I mean, yeah. he loved playing that role. Yes, he did. Yeah. He liked playing that, and, and I enjoyed playing the put upon loser. Okay. That's sort of the Martin Lewis type uh, yes. Abbott and Costello thing. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And I frequently, you know, if you walk down the street and people would go, don't let that, you know, <laughs> asshole, you're ten times fun, you're better than you. And I'd be like, you know, we're not, it's not that. <laughs> it's an act. It's, yeah, you know. Uh, but it was, uh, when we'd go out together, if we'd go out and uh, to a restaurant together, the, the comp, uh, I mean, I, you know, he would get people coming up to him, and I would get people coming up to me. But when we were out together, I mean, people would go nuts. You know, and it, it was really it, uh, it almost like got a lot more popular. I mean, the the ratings were a lot got a lot bigger in, as the when we changed the formats after he left. The yeah. ratings oh. probably tripled or quadrupled. But they're never really. I, I mean, when he and I were together, if we were walking around, I never got the kind of response of, of just sort of people on the street that, that we would get if we were together. I'm, I'm not sure why that was, but... Now, when he uh, when he got called down to L.A. Yeah. And you went with him... Like he's in a ball club or something. Well, he basically he was. He got, everybody, <laughs> yeah. everybody left Seattle to become famous. Yeah, he, right. He got the call. <laughs> he got the call, and it was one of the most amazing things I had ever seen because he... Uh, Joan Rivers had just been fired by the Fox Network, but right. when she was hired... They basically gave her anything she wanted, and so uh, this her office was this palatial office. Now it was Ross's, <laughs> and she had a dressing room that was like they nicknamed it the condo because it had like a reception area, it had a you know like a kitchen, it had a bedroom, it had you know it was like the size of a of a, of a condominium, you know, and. Um, uh, Outside the uh, window, it was the you could see the Hollywood sign, and I, you know, and, and it was. You guys like, got to come in and take over this joint. Yeah, I, huh? I said, "Gee, look at that!" You know, I came down, and, <laughs> and um, it was like you just look out the window, and it was so you have no idea how, what a symbol, all of that. With you, like I'm in Hollywood, you know, and there's the Hollywood sign, and I'm in this, th and there's all, and you're meeting all these people, that you know. Um, that were all on the, you know, the people from L.A. Law or the latest Playboy Playmate or the, you know, whatever is, you know, they're there every day. You know, it's 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 quite you know, it's kind of surreal, like Dorothy yeah. waking up in Oz type thing. It's it's, like, it's a it's it's a something that's very hard to turn down. But I oh yeah, but I did, you know, <laughs> I did. You did, but you did do uh, some episodes because you were yeah. you were the the studio announcer. I was, yeah, announcer. I was, yeah. How was that? That that had, was that a little bit of a switch from going from like sketch comedy to all of a sudden you're the guy behind the mic and I, well, I assume I've been to I lived in LA for a while and I went to tapings of shows and did you have to do like the rev up of the crowd you know yeah like, a little, yeah, a little bit a little bit stuff like that uh, but it was really the uh, uh, you know just rubbing shoulders with uh, all the famous people was you know uh, it was just sort of beyond belief you know you're like wow look you know there's you know, whoever, and then they were like, you know, they were like, hey, buddy, you know, and it's like, you know, <laughs> wow, this is, this is pretty crazy.